Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. My name is Jordan, the Millennial Investor, and in today's episode we're going to be going over the status of the market, where things are looking like moving forward, what I think the market's going to do over the next couple months, and just in general the overall vibes and the feel of the market. There's been a lot of big news that have come out lately and we're going to go over all that, mostly talking about the inflation, the Federal Reserve, commodity prices, as well as some specific stocks individually and what I like to look for in times like this when things are really concerning and we're going into a little light session. If you haven't checked me out before, if this is your first time watching me, I thank you for joining us. I would invite you to subscribe if you find value in this video by the time the video is over. If you haven't followed me before, I have a growth portfolio and a dividend growth portfolio that I update and track throughout this channel, which currently has 23 holdings, 21 holdings in the dividend growth portfolio, and then two small holdings in the growth portfolio, which is Amazon and Salesforce. And if you're interested in doing anything like a mentoring call, like reaching out to me directly, this is down below in the description, details down below, as well as other things like Yada Segment accounts up to $100 for credit card referrals and then of course getting signed up with M1 Finance which 124 people have signed up for so far so feel free to be one number 125 it's a great brokerage it's one we're going to be using today and that leads me to the start of this video speaking of this brokerage let's go ahead and use it let's hop over to the research tab and see where the SPY the SPY has been at year to date Year to date, after this recovery, is 11.57% in the negative, currently sitting at about 420, which is perfect number, 420. So this index is one that typically is most followed by investors. Typically when people refer to the market, that's what they're referring to, the S&P 500, and this is the ETF based around it. And a one-year performance time frame is down right at about 5%. Two years, still up 25%, five years up 72%. Now, the reason we've obviously hit a big headwind here in 2022 is due to a couple different reasons. One, we had overvaluations. Two, we had supply chain issues. Three, we had inflation issues. And then four, we have the looming recession, which is now finally coming into realization. We're living through it. It's happening. It's not fun. Hopefully, it'll be ending soon, which I think it likely will. I don't expect this to be a thick one. I expect this to be a really light, short-term recession. But if you look recently, the recent data that came out just this last week or so, inflation is finally starting to peak, and we're seeing a couple different metrics for that. This is the CPI report. Now, I know a lot of people are really controversial about this. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people think it's accurate. Some people think it's not. But regardless, nonetheless, it did go down. The previous month, in June 2022, they came out with 9.1% on the CPI. Now, this month, they came out with 8.5%. Let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. You can see that it's finally starting to peak, and this is finally starting to go down, not just a little bit, but dramatically. If this were to come in the next month at 9 or 8.9, 8.5% is a pretty dramatic downturn in a one-month period. Now, it goes further than that. The PPI, the Producer Price Index, it says the Producer Price Index Index, which gauges the prices received for final demand products, fell 0.5% from June, the first month-over-month -month period decrease since April 2020, the month after COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. Economists surveyed by Dow Jones had been expecting an increase of 0.2. So that's what's so critical there. Not only is it this is the first time it's decreased since April of 2020, which was obviously about two and a half years ago, but analysts were expecting an increase of 0.2. And not only did it not increase, but it decreased 0.5. So that's a 0.7% difference, which is pretty massive. And this is led by a couple different things. One, it's finally led by people starting to slow down hiring. It's led by a wage growth finally starting to slow. People are finally reaching the ceilings for what they can pay in price for all different types of things, including things on the shelves as well as assets like stocks, like houses, like cars, whatever. And then you see things like commodities, of course, like crude oil, finally starting to hit a ceiling. Just the other day, just going back to just about June 1st, the beginning of the month, just two months ago, you can see that crude oil was around $120 a barrel. And today, even with its increase on a big green day today, finishing out at 94. Just the other day, it bottomed out at like 88. So this is really good, and this is also really good for me because my largest holding is Amazon, and Amazon probably uses more crude oil than maybe any other company on the planet. They ship everything, and they're driving cars all the stinking time. They're flying planes, they're driving semi-trucks, they're driving vans, they're using everything that involves with oil and gas, and this company is benefiting massively. And I think it's part of the reason why over the last couple of months, you've started to see this company really start to recover in share price, because I know that there's a couple other things going on with the company as well, obviously like Amazon Web Services, but I think that's another one of the bullish reasons why this company's starting to recover. If you look over the last three months or so, up 35.5%. 
But what are the reason why things like crude oil, like inflation gauges like CPI and PPI, why are they finally starting to go down? Well, I think that it is mostly obviously because of the interest rates. If you look at these, this shows the last since the century has turned basically. Normally during regular times of interest rate hikes, like say going back to around 2016 when this began, you can see that normally it's a slow, steady trickle up. If you can compare that to today's 2022 hike session, it is just going pretty much vertical. If you look back to March when we started this, it is just bam, 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 straight up. And I think that's what's finally starting to put this valuation into question for the S&P 500 large caps. Now, if you look at these two, if you look at the mid caps and small caps, it is still significantly lower compared to where we normally are, but the large caps were trading so rich. Let's zoom in a little bit further so you guys can get real close to the numbers here. If you look around this area right here, going into late 2020, middle of 2021, we were trading at an average forward PE of around a 20, 21, 22. That's pretty rich. Today, we finally started to come down. Today, we're trading at a 17.8, and that even factors in going up over the last month or two. Just the other day, we were around 15. So that is at a much more healthy level. I think being in the mid-teens is probably the where you want to be to where usually the market's pretty average and reasonably valued. But even being here at 17.8, that's not that bad. And if you compare that to small caps and mid-caps, it is still rock bottom. Pretty much the lowest you've seen well, I hate to say it, but basically since I've been alive, the only exception is the 2008 recession. But these valuations for these non-money making companies, smaller companies that don't have as much pricing power as the big ones, have started to free fall in price. So that leads me to the question, where do I think the stock market is going forward? Where do I think it's going to be going over the next six months, over the next year? Well, I think this is, leads me to where I'm at now and what I did with my portfolio. If you haven't been following me, if you didn't know what I did, what I did was I got completely out of margin. I originally had four positions in my portfolio. I had Amazon, Salesforce, iRobot, and Chewy. iRobot is being bought out by another company, which is Amazon, by the way. Shocker, I know. And then Chewy, I decided to sell out of because it's finally started to recover from its big uproar in price from about $20 up to $45. And I think even today, it might even have broke $50, if I'm not mistaken. But it's finally started to recover over the last couple of months, being up 100 plus percent in three months, which is kind of crazy, right? So I sold out of it. I got pretty much completely out of margin. I have a tiny little bit left, but it'll be going away very soon. But the reason why I did that is because I think there's going to be two outcomes likely with the market. Either one of the two, either inflation is going to come down massively. The Fed's going to U-turn. We're going to start talking in 2023, potentially about interest rate cuts, not hikes, but interest rate cuts. And that could eventually lead this, lead this market to start recovering or at least flatten out over the next year. Now, there's so much different things that could happen. But one of the big negative things that could happen is, of course, if inflation continues to uproar. If this is just a, a one month exception and then we go right back to all time highs and start to reach nine, nine and a half, 10, 11 percent, then this market is going to free fall. We're going to hit new lows for the year and then we're probably not even close to hitting a bottom. As well as other things like company earnings, which have come in strong so far, we may see some weakness in that. But this asks the question, whether we the market goes up or whether the market goes down, what should you do from here? Well, what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself to take advantage of both sides. The reason why I got out of margin is so if the market does go lower, which it could, I don't really know either way. I have predictions, but I think either way, this market can be taken advantage of by the way that you manage your portfolio. If you're going all in and you're all in on margin right now and you have everything that you have invested balls to the wall in really risky companies like ones that we've gone over, like for example, a Coinbase that we were talking about, a company that's losing billions of dollars per quarter. And we look at other growth companies, like for example, we also talked about something like a Cloudflare, a company that's not making any money, losing millions and millions of dollars, then it's probably going to hit really hard if the market hits new all-time lows. But if you're in companies that are growing and are still defensive, let me give you an example. One of my two investments right now, which is CRM, which is Salesforce. Look at this beautiful revenue chart. Looks great, right? Quarter after quarter, record after record. And then look at the free cash flow, just coming in at a record 3.5 billion, its all time highest number just last quarter, which they're about to give updates to this. But if you're investing in companies that are defensive, that can grow revenue and profits despite a recession, 
there's a pretty high floor for that company more than likely. Obviously, look at the company's moat, look at their business model, which I think Salesforce is a great example of one that has a good one. But I think what you should do, if you have margin right now, you should get out of it. I think you should not be out of this market. You should have money in it because I think that right now it's at an inflection point where it could go either much lower or much higher. But I think that if you're sitting completely out or if you're going balls to the wall, all in, I think either one of those is wrong. I'm kind of at an in-between point where if we were to go back down massively, I could get back in a margin, take advantage of companies at record low prices. And if we go higher, I still have a bunch of money invested, pretty much everything invested. And I'll go right alongside that as Amazon and Salesforce would probably go up alongside it. I would take advantage of it. So that's the way you should position your portfolio. In my opinion, it's not financial advice. Do your own research and have your own personal finance. That's why they call it personal because it's personal finance, not just finance. Take your own financial situation. Look at what you think would be best positions for you in the market. But that's at least what I'm doing. I'm out of margin. I'm waiting for opportunities. And I think, honestly, if I have to pick one way or the other, if I think that the market's going up or going down by the end of the year, I got to be honest with you. I think we're going down. I don't think this is looking good. I think that we've recovered quite a bit and there's more downside from upside from here. I could be wrong, but I don't think the rest of 2022 is going to be pretty. And so I'm ready for it. I'm prepared. If we go down, maybe I'm wrong, but if we go down, I'm ready. If we go up, I'm ready. That's the way you should treat your portfolio, in my opinion, based on this current market. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watch all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Get signed up with them on Finance if you haven't already. 124 people have signed up so far. And check out the other stuff down below in the description like I mentioned. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys next time.